uh, popularity and recognition uh, in the whole movie industry. Uh, how did you come up with that? Was it an, on a script or uh, it happened on a stage? Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. There, there, uh, there's so much improvisation um, that goes within a film. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not so sure we expected the response from I'm getting to over this shit. I'm not, uh, because we, it, it, it became a generational. Yeah, through many generations. <laughs> it, it, it and so, um, I remember the first week we were shooting, maybe the first or second day we were shooting, we shot the scene uh, when we first meet Mel, when Mel comes in. He comes in and um, um, he has a gun. And someone says, gun, gun. And, and, and then I, come, I go after him. I, I, this is much as I remember it. Now. I go after him and he throws me over his shoulder. And I land on the floor. And I'm already, I'm close to 50 years old. I'm close to 50 years old. I had already had fasten, the fascinations about being retired and, and, and all those things. So it, it, it was such appropriate line that I, I'm saying I'm at the, at the point of near retirement and then I get flipped over by this young guy over here. And, and it came out of uh, laying on the floor <laughs> and, and uh, the big dollar director, in the middle of the city, Glover said something. He said, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> and it came out of it. But nobody knew that it was going to, I don't believe, knew that the impact that um, that line would have in the whole series. And, and it became one of the callings for Sergeant Murtaugh. I'm too old for this shit. Certainly is. Uh, you had a great chemistry with Mel Gibson. Uh, was it there from the beginning, or uh, it develops during the? Well, well I, I, it's fascinating. Um, when I was shooting um, the color purple, the dialect coach that I had was the same dialect coach that worked with with with, uh, with Mel on the film. And uh, it's in some in some ways you don't know I, how things are going to come together. You never know um, that you're going to meet each other. But you, when you admire somebody's work, I watched the literally, I watched the great deal of the work that he did in, uh, in 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 Australia and Australia. I mean, Australia. Uh, films were great films, you know, during that period uh, that Mel came came into in, 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 into his age, into his time and growth. And I watched a great deal of that. But you always think about, you find actors that, man, you know, you'd love to have a, an opportunity to work with them, you know. Um, and, and that, that's the part, I think, when you're relatively young, um, I wasn't 40 years old. But when you're relatively young, and you can think that way, you can have those ideas of the possibility of working with someone. Uh, I've done the color purple. I've done it with with uh, with uh, a large, important movie, a major novel. I have also uh, played played Place in the Hearts with Sally Field, Robert Benton. So. Um, and then I did a, 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 a role as a, as a policeman in Witness. So and so all those things had come, major movies, and I could think about I mean, who would I would love to work with. And, I, and the conversation I told somebody I should love to work with 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 um, um, with Mel Gibson. And then I met him at the at the Venice uh, uh, a film festival. And all long, be, all, long before all this, we were touring Silverado, I met him at the Venice Film Festival, and, and, and now, you should say, man, we, we uh, actually say this all the time, man, I'd love to work with you. Uh -huh. And I said, man, I'd love to work with you. And so, boom, it happened.
You know, and the first, the first thing that happens is no, no one believes it's going to be a franchise film. There's no weapon, you know. So the, the, the good thing about that is that we both were in a place, and particularly I was in a place I can think about working with someone who I admire, whose work I admire. Because I, I, was, I was at the same time, I would go, because of with, with Peter Weir, and, 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 and I did a movie with um, a, a, an Australian director, um, Iceman, with Timothy Hutton and John Long, um, Fred, uh, Fred Skepsi, Fred Skepsi. So I did a movie with Fred Skepsi, and so the possibility of thinking about doing something um, with somebody that you, you admire came about. And it was great, it was absolutely great. Yeah. But perhaps it's uh, tough questions. Which of Little Weapon movies are your most beloved, your favorite? Can you say one? Well, I, I, I mean, I would have to say uh, the, the second one. Um, I, it was not my idea. It was Richard Downer's idea. It began with uh, the, the, I, I would just say the, the narrative was about um, Colombian drug laws and everything else. And uh, in, in, in the, before, in, in the script, in the script, the script writers changed it to the whole idea of Cougar Mines, South Africa. And a very interesting point, it was near the end of apartheid and at the end of a system of apartheid in South Africa. And the, 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 a great deal of, of, of attention was given to that. You know, there were movements all over the world to free Mandela in, in, in the apartheid. I happen to be involved in some of those movements, but I'm not the one, I'll say it emphatically, I'm not the one that suggested the idea, whoever, whenever it came about. Now, if you look in the first leap of the weapon, you'll see in the first leap of the weapon, on his refrigerator, uh, on his refrigerator, my character has a, a poster saying, in the part time. So the, the whole idea, the idea of and I think that Richard Donner, the director, was very, very committed to that particular idea of because the conversations around the U.S. and building to to really start a campaign, a sustained, sustained campaign to end apartheid, which ended. So it, it was. It, it looks as if it was foreshadowed by what we did, what we did in the weapon, but not. Not so, that's not the case. But certainly it was a, a, a part of the, the conversation, of the major conversation around the world, and particularly in the United States. And so um, that, that, that gave some sort of context to that particular moment to change the script to Cougar Ranch. And it's a very, in fact, what was even more important was that the film was not allowed to be shown in South Africa because of that thing. Really? It, it was, it was, it, it was, it was, the government would not allow it to be, the South African go government would not allow Leave the Weapon, when it opened worldwide, to be shown in the South Africa. That's the fact. Yeah. God bless us over. The, the, the movies uh, from the series Level Weapon, uh, you know, so separate few years, so uh, and you make uh, many other movies between them. So how do you come back to the character? Is there any, you know, uh, to, the, to your character when, when you are shooting the, the next part? I'm, I'm sorry, you say what? Well, uh, well, uh, the, the, there, there are always few years between the Little Weapon one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's so some time. How, how you how you come back to the character, you know, to to get it proper? Well, I, I, you, you, you you go on to other work. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of work out there. I didn't know 
I, I didn't know it was going to be a, a two. I didn't know it was going to be a three. And, and, and certainly the, the movie, because of its popularity and because of, of, I mean, I think people would count the numbers, would crunch the numbers. The numbers say that people are looking at these movies when they go into uh, the second phase, when they go to television, all those things happen that allow a movie to be become a, 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 a much larger just than just one episode of a, you know, uh, or another episode. Or, I mean, it became it because it became so popular and it became so popular in terms at the time of video rentals. That it became popular in video rentals. You know, this whole, the whole system now was changing around, around film, you know, and, and the, how films could be, um, become hits. And then you begin talking about, let's make another one, let's make the second one, let's make the second one. All those things were kind of like uh, guided by the fact that, that the, the movie, The Little Weapon, had become a worldwide phenomenon. And it certainly was. Uh, I read that you uh, originally studied economy, like uh, on a college uh, or university, and you uh, you decided to go for acting at the age of 28. Well, I, I had the thing. <laughs> you never know. But I tell you something, and I, I say, if if not if if I was not involved in the movements uh, against the struggle against uh, uh, Portuguese colonialism, the struggle to end uh, the system of apartheid in South Africa, or the, or the struggle in, in Namibia, all the, 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 I think, armed struggles, the armed struggles that were happening in, in supporting those armed struggles that were happening in those countries, I would not have I might not have become an actor. Because I became, um, I, be, I began uh, doing, in, my, uh, in 1976, I did a play called The Blood Knot by a South African author. Uh, and, and one of the, the greatest South African author of the day, Ethel Fugar. I did that play. I went from, and, and this, is, this is while I'm in San Francisco. This is before I even decided about being an actor or anything. I did that play, The Blood Knot. I did another play uh, in, in San Francisco directed by in a small theater, this is community. This is all community theater. I began in community theater, so I did a play by Fugard again. Cesare Ponzi is dead, and it's about the passport and the pass walls and so on. Then and I went to L.A. Uh, to try to do that film at, at, in the community theater. And I, we could not do it because an equity company from Chicago came to the Westwood Playhouse. And so what happened was I did the sister play called The Island about Robin Island. And I did that. I got an agent. So, so my whole career is around the issues around South Africa. I got an agent I, with that. And then I ended up going to uh, going to New York to do the Blood Not Off Broadway, and then in 1982, I did the Master Harold and the Boys, first at the Yale Repertory Theater, very, very famous theater in, in, in the, on the East Coast, and then it, I came on Broadway. It was the, it was the beginning. It was the the most important film. I mean, it's play, play. The theatrical play. It was it, it was the most um, it was the best considered the best play that year on Broadway. So I ended up from that. I came out of of of, of uh, Master Harold and the Boys. Robert Benton, the director of Places in the Heart, and the writer and director of Places in the Heart, 
saw me and decided to bring me into this film, Places in the Heart. And that began my career, really. It was my first major role. I went from, mate, I went from Places in the Heart, I did Witness, I, I did Civil Rado, and then I, I ended up doing um, uh, The Color Purple, and after The Color Purple, The First Leads the Weapon. So that's the sequence of my career. And now, I mean, I didn't expect that, but I found myself, I, I, found, I found it that um, despite my um, ambivalence of what I wanted to be uh, an, an actor, I decided that I wanted to be an actor. And by that time, by the time I was like um, 30, really, I decided I decided I wanted to be an actor. 28, 29, 30, I decided. I guess from some point you can pick roles, you know, that you, uh, you can pick between them. Uh, what's your, you know, main main reason behind that? Like, uh, is it director or the script or the team? It's the material itself. It begins with the material. You know, whether it's uh, or the material comes to you, uh, and then I, uh, I I remember. Um, after Places in the Heart, I, um, I had a meeting with uh, um, uh, Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote Civil Rock, Kevin Kine, Kevin Costner, uh, uh, myself, and the whole list of, 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 uh, uh, um, of, 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 of actors and actresses that were there came to that. So I did, I did Civil Rock, and I remember at a screening and a, a meet, meeting Lawrence Kasdan, uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, I, Lawrence Kasdan said, I want to do a, a Western with a black hero. You know, not a black Western, but a, hit, a, a, a Western, traditional Western with a black hero in it. And he hired me for a civil run. And I had to bring, I had the first line, the first time you see me, is there's everything, and he has these two guns, he has these guns, and he says, I don't want to kill you, and you don't want to be dead. That's my great line. Now, I, I have people tease me about that line from Civil Rock. I don't want to kill you, and you don't want to be dead. So it's, it's, it's one of those kind of situations where I think with all careers, you begin to do simply the best work you can do, and and at that particular point in time, a film, some film, a filmmakers uh, have the opportunity uh, and make the film to put you good on. You begin uh, moving up and, and from Civil Rock, whose career really jumped off from Civil Rock. Kevin Cosner, you know, Kevin Klein, Scott, <coughs> uh, you know, I'm of, uh, Scott, uh, Scott Glenn, our career jumped off from that. And for that period of time, um, um, we, we, we find ourselves. Then, then you have from Silverado uh, to um, to witness. I mean, to, and witness, and then the color purple. The color purple was the the, the one in which um, I think a, a great number of the audience remember me from the color purple. And then then right up the color purple, we we have. Sometimes I forget <laughs> at the sequence, yeah. Uh, we have some uh, questions on the microphone, so I, I don't want you to stay there. Hello, sir. Uh, I would like to know if there ever will be a new uh, new movie from the series, would you rather that uh, Mel Gibson will direct or someone else? What was that? Uh, if, if there is any... Uh, the, 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 We'll be fine, right? Yeah. I, 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 we, I, I don't know. I mean, really, you know, I'm sure if Mel's a wonderful director, and I'm sure Mel would be the one who would throw his hat into the, in, 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 into the ring to, uh, to direct that. 
and the likelihood would be that he would direct it if we've done it. Now, remember, it's been a long time since Lethal Weapon 4 came out. Lethal Weapon 4 came out in 1998. It's a long time. The summer of 1998. That's 25 years. This fourth is this summer coming up. 25 years ago. I mean, it plays all the time. Uh, uh, let's see. I, I, I mean, I will be, if we don't get it done real quick, I will be too old for this da da da. <laughs> you can say it. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Glover. You talked about a lot of roles in your career, but my favorite one was from Bat 21, where you played a pilot helping Gene Hackman, who was shot down. What do you remember, or what are some of the fond memories about making that film? I, I, it, it's funny because um, it's, a, it's at a time when, when it seems like, you know, Gene Hackman went from one film to another film <laughs> to another film. He it, it was, it was like making films quite a bit. And um, I, I, I I just was approached with it, and uh, by by the by the director, and I just I I, I had fun doing it, you know. Uh, I said we were in Malaysia uh, for a period of time. The first time I've been to Malaysia, and I had a great. It didn't. It it, it was kind of a cult film. It didn't get wide distribution, but because everything that that. Uh, um, I think Gene, Gene Hackman at the time was having a film come out a month. Every month there was a new Gene Hackman film coming out. And so, but, but it was a fun, a fun piece to do. I learned how to actually learn how to fly the fly, plane. You, you learned to fly, how to fly the plane. I, I pilot, some of that scene, I'm piloting the plane. I will go back to your uh, questions in um, in app in a, in a few minutes. But uh, no, 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 no. I just talking to the audience. So uh, Predator Two, uh, you 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 changed uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, in this franchise. Was it was you slightly afraid because he's colossal? You know? Well, I had a very active agent. At the time, uh, he was an agent, uh, Arnold Rifkin. And the Arnold Rifkin brought uh, Bruce Willis to prominence. Uh, and took him off the, uh, the television show and, and, and got, got him in Die Hard. You, you know, it would happen to his career. <laughs> so Arnold became my agent. And we were, it was interesting because they wanted him to, he had, he had put me in a position for Predator 2. But the, real, the reality is that Arnold was indecisive about whether he wanted to do it or not. And so, and so the studio, Paramount, I believe, had its, its uh, you know, found itself in a, in a, a pickle. They had invited, they had, they had offered me Predator 2, and yet, yet the, one of the producers was trying to talk well, I don't know what doing it. I'm not going to say his name because he was also a producer on Lethal Weapon as well. You know, so all these things are connected in a way. And so um, 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 it, it was a. Hey, I loved it. <laughs> I loved doing that. I, I was just talking about preparing yourself for a, a, two, a two, two young, two young men. Just, uh, just a while ago, preparing yourself for doing something. I, 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 I never lived weights before, so I lifted weights. I, I lived in San Francisco. I run on the beach every morning, like four miles on the beach, two miles one way, two miles back. And I really was prepared for that. 
So a great deal of the action, you know, the, the things you think about as a kid, things you think about when you're young and everything. I had an opportunity to do that. I can't do that stuff now. I can't do all that stuff. But I had an opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, it, 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 was, it, was quite, it was quite wonderful. It's right. The, the shooting was in Los Angeles, if I remember well. And I, I'm sorry. The, the, the shooting, the Predator 2, was in Los Angeles. And it was, what I heard, quite dangerous there. Was it? No. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not. Like, the, the, when you made Predator 2, Two. Uh, it was, the shooting was in Los Angeles. We shot that in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All night. All of us night shooting. At night. And I heard that it was like danger slightly, you know, like, yeah, like yeah, rats. Yeah, yeah, there was a, uh, well, I, I, uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was proud of my work, you know, um, and uh, uh, the way in which the script was constructed, and because the predator was going to find who was my, who was, what, what, what human being was going to challenge me. You know, I was gonna find the toughest guy on the block. He's the, he's the, he's the toughest. He's gonna to, going to attempt to to wage him in battle. So it was fun to do. I mean, those things, the, the thing about making movies is it's fun. I mean, but acting is fun as well for me. And the main, the main thing about making movies and having the opportunity to do different genres, you know, whether it's a genre um, like Silverado, West Western, with with uh, that wonderful cast, or the genre uh, where it's an action film, and then I, I think that's part of the one thing that I I really am happy about in terms of my career is crossing over uh, genres, you know, and so. Um, yeah, to do that was quite, quite, uh, uh, quite. Let me tell you something else. So the thing, the movies, when I chose my agent says, and this is the way my agent is thinking. This is the way an agent thinks. The agent says, okay, if we do Predator Two, okay, and let's say a great deal of the audience in Predator Two was coming because. Um, on a sports net and, and set the stage for it, of course. But you're going to get some credit too. I will get some credit. So when I go back to negotiate for the next lethal weapon, my numbers are higher. Or I'm in a better negotiating position, perhaps. The theory behind that, whether it works or not, that's a whole other thing. That's wise. That's wise from your agent, definitely. Yeah, my agent was doing his job. He said, We, we do president too. Because all of us want to do it. And then when we do that, we do that. And when we come to back to negotiating Lethal Weapon 3, we have more leverage on, at the table. In look, look at him, he was in Predator 2, so. <laughs> Much higher. Yeah. I understand. Uh, you mentioned that uh, making movies uh, is a lot of fun, but. You act in many action movies, so uh, were you sometimes afraid of your life? Because it, sometimes it might be dangerous. Not really. I, I, I think that the whole... I mean, I think there's such care with, with all departments, you know, especially uh, special effects and, 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 and also the, the departments that, that help protect the departments that help protect their stunts. It's all, there's so much work. Uh, and, and, and the beautiful thing is about, about, about relaxing and doing film now is the care. And as we know, there have been accidents that have happened recently, gun accidents and exactly like that. So it's a great deal of care. Now, when I think about that now, since I have not been in those films where I had to handle a gun, uh, what, you think about, well, what, what dangers may, that I may have escaped, you know, at, at earlier in my career, 
But gun safety and weapon safety now is, is on everybody's list, you know. Um, so it's, it, 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 uh, I, I thought that we were very careful. Uh, but, but, but you don't play with that, even though there may be blanks in it. You don't play with that. that. Um, in fact, uh, um, you know, on a film earlier, I mean, there films then that have been accidents before, you know, with, with gun safety. And a little, a little, a little problems with gun safety. Of, of, uh, and, and so I think that was an important, an important part of thing that we, we get more and more into this, either not use guns, but also uh, find other ways of weapons besides guns. But we have to, have to really continue to work on the issue of gun safety. I guess in filmmaking around the world. I, I read one story from uh, Predator 2 that uh, at the end there is a group of Predators and there was like uh, LA Lakers, uh, the, uh, the basketball team. What we said uh, an hour later was what? And that, uh, that uh, group of Predators uh, and, and uh, the, 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 like original there was like players, basketball players from oh, LA oh, Lakers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and you, you were involved. A group of predators yeah. playing basketball, yeah. yeah I mean, one of them was my brother. He, he, he was one of the extras on the Predator yeah, movie. Yeah, they were playing basketball, yeah. It's, it's, after, we, after we finished the film, you know, yeah. When all the predators come, come, all the predators come out. And they say, okay, take your best shot. <laughs> Uh, I will go to questions uh, in, uh, in your questions in the app. Do you see Murdoch, the character from Little Weapon, will stand a chance against the Predator? Uh, do I think what now? That, uh, your, your character from uh, Little Weapon, if he has a chance in fight with the real Predator? Well, we never know. Uh, we, we, you know, uh, uh, it may come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you, you, and, and, and the five with 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 with, 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 with was Murtaugh coming back in five? I, I, I would think so. Okay. One more chance. One more time. <laughs> you know. Uh, were there any uh, alternative ending in Predator, or uh, did you know how? That you wait, you know. I don't, I, I don't see. I don't think there was an alternate ending in Predator. Uh, we, uh, as I remember, you know, there was there was no alternate ending. Yeah. Uh, did you try the Predator costume? Did, did I? Did I? Did you try the, the you know the Predator the, the costume the? Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't try. <laughs> uh, would, you, would you like to? Uh, yeah, that, it was, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't try on the, on the, uh, uh, the Predator outfits. Uh, did you see uh, Predator Prey, the new installment in series? I'm sorry, did I? The, the, the movie, uh, Predator Prey, this like new, new movie from the franchise. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to my question back because uh, I want you mentioned some other uh, other movies. The, you mentioned the color purple. Uh, how was it to play with Whoopi Goldberg? Well, it, it was wonderful. Uh, uh, she's just a fine actress, and it was. Uh, um, it, it was wonderful. It had, we, had, we had a great time, you know, and, and, and I believe that Steven Spielberg allowed us to kind of uh, really get to know each other. Uh, and I think that was, it was really important because no one more than the actors knew how important this film was. This was an important film. It's a major, it's a major 
novel, it's a Pulitzer Surprise novel, and this is a major movie in the community of, uh, of, of African American black actors. And I think that was, and actresses, and I think that was a way of, in which Stephen let it us, let, allowed us to find our own space, allowed us to kind of tell the story as, as, as he began to orchestrate how he sees the story. We're, so we're, being, we're very much, I think, uh, I, I think it was a very, I, I really creative way of allowing the actors spending time around each other, spending a great deal of time. I think it's about five weeks of rehearsal. So we spend five weeks around each other and and learn things about each other that we will be able we would be able to bring to the uh, the role, uh, our specific roles. So I think I think I don't know if that was planned that way. We would, we would, we would say, say we come to rehearsal, we come at 9 o'clock, okay, to rehearsal, 10 o'clock to rehearsal. Then we, 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 we work with each other or we read the script. And this is without any direction from Steven Spielberg, the director. Then we begin to uh, play out our own relationships begin to tell our own stories to each other and find a kind of way of becoming an ensemble. So we became an ensemble and we're ready to shoot the film as an ensemble despite, despite uh, whether uh, uh, the, the, the level of, despite the level of participation uh, that Stephen might have added to it. But it was, I thought that was very, very clever, um, uh, and, and, and when, I, when I thought about it, when I, as, as, as later on, after we began uh, shooting, and later, as I saw her work in it, we had got had begun to know each other because in such a way that we may not have known each other if we're on that rigid schedule of shooting, finishing a scene. Uh, and all the scheduling that goes on the board with shooting a film. We got more out of that. We got more from each other. And uh, I think that was helpful to the film as well. So uh, that, that was your first cooperation with Steven Spielberg? Yeah, that, that, that was the first time that I worked with him. Um, and um, it was quite... Uh, is, he, is he special? <laughs> it, it was really, it's really wonderful. Uh, another another movie, uh, Maverick, that was like short cameo but great one. <laughs> that, that was a great one. That was that was a uh, that was a little trick for the audience. <laughs> it was really that was that was that was Dick Downer's idea, man. I and I'm coming in, it's really funny little take on it, you know. And me coming in as a as a, as a robber and everything else. And he said, we're looking for major. <laughs> I, 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 I actually like that moment it, it, for Maverick with Bell and I in Maverick. It was unexpected. And you have right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good moment. Jumanji, the next level. Uh, how was the cooperation with Nene DeVito? I saw some videos that you, you laugh all the time. Yeah, man. What we do is, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was fun, man. It's it, it a play on sides. Oh, I'm sorry, it was fun. It, it was a little spoof on, on, on sides, you know, <laughs> with Danny DeVito and, uh,
So I, I worked with the father and the son. <laughs> you know, yeah, I worked with the fa father and the son. Well, that's a joy. I worked with Lawrence Kasdan in both the film, films we did, Civil Rider and uh, Grand Canyon, man. They were one of my, two of my favorite films, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, he, was, he was trying to, and Lawrence was a very extraordinary writer screenwriter. So, his, and his ideas around with the Civil Rado, and I remember me saying I wanted, to, I wanted a black hero, in a Western with a black hero. And then Grand Canyon came out of a, 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 a moment in his life when uh, all these things are happening in communities surrounding uh, Los Angeles, and he feels as if, as a, a human being, as and as a, a, a citizen, that he is uh, distant from those things that happen. Even though there's physical distance, the fact that it's in in the same city, and these two cities have two different two parts of the cities have two different realities, and I, I think that was one of the. Uh, uh, themes around um, uh, uh, Grand Canyon as well. Uh, which, because uh, everybody knows Predator, Little Weapon. Is there any movie which you, you really like, but it didn't get such a recognition it deserved? A, a, a film that I did, um, To Sleep With Anger, um, was the film that's in the Library of Congress now, The Sweep of Anger, is one of America's great films, but we didn't get the attention that we wanted. It was a film that we made for just over a million dollars. And we, we, would get, we were able to get the money because we, they knew because of, a, a, of the possibility of a, 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 a lethal weapon too, I was to get the money, the million dollars, to do, um, uh, to do that movie. To Sleep With Anger, really smart, by uh, a very wonderful director, a young director. Uh, and, uh, but that, that was, if, 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 as I say that film, I thought that it, we it didn't get the kind of attention that we should have had on, on, on the movie, with the movie Grand Canyon. And, uh, uh, but the, the conversation starts, doesn't stop when the movie premieres and plays and, and, and is put on the shelf somewhere. But the conversation, I come people who said, man, I really love Grand Canyon. And, it's, and, they, and, they, and they have a take on Grand Canyon or really, love to sleep with anger, you know, that you expected to grow. Um, I, 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 thought, I thought that Beloved, the movie I did with uh, Oprah Winfrey, was an important film. You know, I think it, it was, you have a, a, a book, a novel, which, um, with one of the, the Pulitzer Prize. It's an important novel. And, 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 and I, when I approach that, the work of that, working on that film, it's, it's a way of looking at um, the impact, uh, the generational impact of slavery. You know, sometimes we said, you, you, the system of slavery was was in, in the United States was quite different because it was at the point in time at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So if you look at the Industrial Revolution, the first engine which drove the in, uh, Industrial Revolution was cotton. Yeah. Cotton was, because it, it, it created consumption disposable consumption. And cotton was the, the first, the second 
engine which guided the industrial revolution was what? Fossil fuel. So cotton and cotton, cotton when the United States uh, became a nation, 18, 1789, it was a poor nation at, at, the, at the end of the Revolutionary War. But within the early 1940, it was the richest country economically in the world because of cotton. Because of what? The Industrial Revolution. And then it promoted the, the idea of jobs. It took women out of the home in different ways. They worked in and in, in, in what was disposable? Clothes. Cotton inventors found a way, a machine, to spin cotton into thread in the fabric faster than ever with human hands could do. And we often know when we think about that. When we think about, because cotton was a luxury item. Cotton was something that was grown in places like Kashmir and other places. So cotton had been grown in the world. There were cotton that had been grown for, for centuries in the world. But it's why taking cotton and the process of trans, transferring cotton uh, into, in, into thread, into cloth and everything else created the first the first engine of the uh, industrial revolution. Uh, I, I, did, 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 we, I, did we understand that to some extent how important cotton was? The United States became within 40 years of its independence the richest country in the world because of cotton. And slavery. And, 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 and whatever it is, it's like um, the, the whole, the two people who communicated, you know, sometimes we go here, often Abraham Lincoln understanding what labor, the direction of labor, who would he correspond with? Abraham Lincoln, Karl Marx. They would correspond with each other. Understanding the process of industrialization and how it would change the nature of how people, moving people from rural areas and bringing them into the city and factories and other ways in which they mass produce. It's just amazing when you think about that, that whole process about, uh, and, and what cotton made the United States. Um, there's a wonderful book by a writer, uh, um, Cotton and the Making of American Capitalism. Yeah. Wonderful book about that. About understanding the dynamics in their, uh, the very thing. I majored in economics. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's fascinating how you're doing that. So it, it, it was that, that, that the story of, of, of at, form, it's former, I, I call it because they weren't sitting, formerly enslaved Africans. From that, that's what we are, we were formerly enslaved Africans. We didn't become citizens until after the Civil War. The, the, uh, um, uh, what happened in the Civil War, the Emancipation Proclamation freed, ended slavery, but after the Civil War, they were another uh, 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 amendment allowed to be uh, allowed to become citizens as well, and it, it's a very in understanding that the 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 power or the the wealth created by cotton is important to understand how the United States became in its early uh, sense of itself became the, the, the richest country in the world. Not the most powerful, but the richest country in the world. That was very strong message. And if you have any last message for uh, Comic Con Prague, a few well, words. Oh, uh, well, I mean. Did you enjoy that? Huh? Did you enjoy Comic Con Prague? Do I wear them? Enjoy Comic Con Prague. Oh, I did. It's beautiful. 